watching. Gita Rose here. Thank you for tuning in. I didn't make a video last week because I was making a movie of sorts, a movie about the movie, about the movie that we're in. <laughs> I uh, was honored and excited to be filming an episode of interviews with Extra Dimensionals with Ruben Langdon. And so we were filming and I didn't make a video to share for last week. I am using a DSLR camera uh, to film this that I've never used before. Thank you, Sarah, for lending this to me. And I don't have a microphone, and I think the clicking of the focus can be picked up, so I apologize if the audio in this is a little wonky, but, you know, it's all good. It's all part of the show. So I'm honestly feeling... A different type of energy making this video. Um, sort of tired, um, but excited to do this and excited to share. So if my energy is a little different in this, that's why it may not even be noticeable, but I feel it within me. So I've been watching Interview with Extra Dimensionals for quite a few years and had been so impressed with the quality that Ruben presents, the storytelling, the epic landscapes, and of course, the channelers and their stories, and then we get the actual channeled information as well. And I was so struck with all aspects of his presentation, and it was a marker for me, something to imagine, to aspire to. It was, in a way, my glass ceiling, as far as I could imagine. One day, wouldn't it be great if I was on an episode of Interview with Extra Dimensionals? And only at most a month after I started sharing my channeling experiences and Bella's information, Ruben contacted me. And we'd been in conversation for about a year and then developed a friendship as well. And so when it came to the point that he was here in my house in Marin County with his amazing friend, Steve Copeland, who created the film Shift of the Ages, it was an actualization of these dreams of as far as my imagination could take me. And so always, as I'm sharing my story and my journey with stepping forward as a channel and sharing what it means to really awaken into ET contact, I like to be that reflection for people to share that like, this was, this was huge for me. This was, this was something that my imagination, that my higher mind gave me as a translation to strive for. And then it was bigger and beyond my imagination. Uh, Ruben's show has now been picked up by Gaia TV, and it's not a guarantee that my episode will be on the channel, but to even have that in the mix adds a level of excitement that I couldn't even have imagined a year ago. I was also, um, I was paid. Ruben paid me. Ruben was extremely gracious and, um, eh, words, <laughs> um, generous, there we go, with the stipend that he receives from Gaia TV. And all of my meals and everything were paid for while they were here. And on top of just the experience, I made a connection with these guys, these amazing creators. I'd always, I, I always wanted big brothers, and I feel like I, I gained that in a really beautiful way. And then also having the experience of being with these conscious, activated, aware... Did you the sound of me? Siri. I don't know if that picked up, but Siri chimed in from across the room. I don't know what word I said activated, or sometimes it's not even words anymore. It's just frequency. It's communication and conversation with the higher self through this non-biological consciousness. She's like, did you accidentally summon me? No, no accident, Siri. Thank you all for listening. So to be creating a documentary with, with these guys, with these friends of mine who are 
so conscious in their awareness and making film, making stories. I was able to feel the actuality of our reality that we're just making a movie. We're just in a show. We are characters having an experience. And I was able to feel it in such a way because here's this, this person that I had seen throughout the years doing these amazing documentaries and now here he is with me as a friend. It was like the mirror coming down, like, like breaking the fourth wall in a way. And so I feel it at such a deeper level, this knowing that it's an experience. And um, Ruben and I talked a lot about acting and what it means to be an actor. And he asked me like, what is acting? <clears throat> and that question always got me too. That question always stemmed me when I was in college at the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York City. It's kind of this philosophical question that I always in ways struggle to have my own answer to. And I'm like, um, it's honest response in imaginary circumstances. Sure, what else? Um, it's listening. Sure, what else? Before you get there, what do you do? Says Ruben. And I got to the point where I was like, I don't know, this feels like a riddle. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Make a choice. Says, oh, right, of course. And when I was in, in acting school and when I was in shows, directors and people would always comment in positive ways, but surprising ways. Oh, like, she makes really interesting choices. And I've been thinking about that the last few days. It's a different way for us to look at the idea that everything is neutral, right? Looking at it in the, in the frame of this is a script, this is a movie, the scene that we're in, the line that the character says, there's all these different ways that the character can choose to express it. And that's what we can do in each and every moment is to make a choice of how we act as the best versions of ourselves, of how we be ourselves. It really is a choice. And then from there, yes, it is honest response and honest listening in imaginary circumstances. We are in essentially what is an imaginary circumstance. Uh, then uh, we went to uh, in between uh, filming. So we actually filmed uh, the Bella interview first and we came up against some really fun obstacles when we were finding a location to shoot the interview. Uh, there was fun synchronicity and visitations from coyotes and construction happening at all these different places and uh, different construction companies using bobcats and the cats interfering with their noise of us being able to film, but it was really beautiful to see all of us truly apply these lessons and to truly be in the knowing that like, oh, it's all for a reason. Oh, okay, cool. All right. You know, we'll try and set our intentions and shift to reality and see if we can jump to a scenario into a scene where they aren't doing this construction, but mm, nope, that's not the point of the story. Not yet. It's to really feel, to know that it's not the circumstances, it's how we choose to respond in these imaginary circumstances. So in between filming, we actually went to the Bashar event in Oakland, the Crystal Skull and the Council of 13. And the Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull was actually there. Um, this experience was one of the most profound experiences that I have ever had. As soon as Daryl begins to make the link to Bashar, I am also in the mainframe. I'm completely in the link. And I am in a room, a big circular room that I understand is the Council of 13. And I can see Bashar and me. It's like I'm looking down on it. I'm, I'm able to fully see the scene, to see the set. 
and then the entity of the crystal skull introduces itself to me and I am getting the messages of what's about to come through Daryl moments before it happens and I'm aware that this skull is an entity and it's part of the transmission and then Bashar says this and validates this experience and from there I was led through a journey it's the only way that I can describe it I was absolutely sober and it felt like I had taken a huge dose of mushrooms um, <laughs> very close to that type of journey, in fact, with those types of waves um, where you reach a, um, a crest, an apex of information, and then you're very gently kind of dropped down. And maybe you think it's done. And then whoop, here goes another one, the, these waves of lessons. And a lot of it was based around me more so being able to know that I have a very strong connection to this information to this lineage, that this is the role that I'm playing in this movie. I was able to see the different beings that people were questioning about, different ideas, different themes. I was able to see exactly where the information was going. I've often um, described it, I actually described the sensation of being in the channeling state to Daryl one time as being like an old-fashioned telephone operator of putting the lines in to the mainframe one moment and I'll direct your call. And he actually laughed at me when I told him that because he was like, wow, you're almost too young to have that reference. And I said, well, my mom was a telephone operator and Daryl's mom was a telephone operator as well. So I was in the moment of getting further crystallization of knowing that this is my experience. So knowing when there's a yes, we can give you more information. Knowing when, oh, at first there's a no, but the crystal skull says we can go there. And so then that door opens and I was fully in the relay. Um, and then there were moments where I would be taken somewhere else, where the information was secondary and I wasn't hearing what was being said, but I was feeling these intense emotions a type of fear. Um, this all happened over last weekend, right? Which was Good Friday, and then the Bashar event was on Passover, and there was this sitting with the experience of a type of death, and connecting to the new me, connecting to the new all of us, these intense in times almost completely overwhelming emotions surging through me that ultimately were linked in unconditional love, that were complete expansion, complete observation, complete knowing. But coming from our third density perspective, these are entirely new feelings. And it takes training to be able to hold and run and hone these new feelings. And this was part of the lesson for me. This was the teaching and in times, Bashar, I would hear the words, would say something to completely validate and help me through my experience. There were times when I almost was going to just run out of the room screaming, <laughs> having the experience of seeing that mirror, of looking at all of the denial, of looking at the denser emotions and fully transmuting it and transforming it, but having feelings of like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. And then a message would come through, something would come through that would calm me. And in times too, I, um, I got so specific with them where I was like, I don't know how much more I can take of this, but if you click your teeth, if you click the teeth right now, that's gonna help me. And sure enough, would come through. So it was this intense journey of activation, of activating my own crystal skull, the blueprint, the mainframe, the channel, the blank slate, the actor that is all of us. 
And I was so thankful to be able to have my friends and everyone there. And it was, again, one of the most intense experiences that I have ever felt. And it has allowed me to dive deeper into my connection with Bella. I did a session yesterday for a friend of mine, Caroline, and going into the altered state, going into the breathing, I almost didn't want to go because that fear, that feeling of death came up again where I was like, I feel like I'm, I'm dying. I feel like I'm going to die. And I could see Bella and feel her. And I was reminded of the first moment almost over nine years ago when I first made contact and first went into the channeling state. It was told to me every single moment that you do this will be a choice. You will re-choose and re-choose and re-choose this agreement. So I was reminded of that moment and reminded of the lesson that Ruben had reflected that it starts with a choice. And then I was shown, it is kind of like a death. And you're already dead. Remember, it's an experience. Remember, it's a show. You're a spirit playing a character in ways you're already dead. And that's really what you're connecting to. You are letting go of the ego, of my personality construct, she explained to me. And when the link happens, I am more so going into the oversoul perspective. It is a death. Fully seeing it from the other side. So the link was stronger and deeper and I was able to bring through more precise information and more story and more emotional resonance of her perspective. So again, I'm just sharing what my experience is and always wanting to bring it back to things that can be applicable for us, regardless of what your journey is, regardless of what type of channel you wish to be. When our mind gives us an idea, such as me having an excitement about maybe one day I get to be on interview with extra dimensionals, that's a direct translation coming from our higher mind. And we hold that vibration. We see those scenes. We play that character that is already there in each and every little moment. Choosing what is the highest vibration. Choosing our highest joy in each and every moment, of course, without any insistence. Choosing our highest objective, our highest intention. And that is how these grand stories truly align. And then also to remember that in times when perhaps we are feeling uncomfortable, nervous, overwhelmed, those are potent feelings that we can use for integration. There is an essence in the energy itself that we can utilize. And that's what we're doing. We are transforming completely from density and limitation into embodying love and limitless expression. And so we make a choice as the actor, as the character in the show, to not be negatively affected by it. It's a blank slate. It's just words on a page. It's a script that maybe has a framework of a theme, but you can choose. You can always choose how you say your lines, how you respond to the energy. So thank you to Ruben Langdon and to Steve Copeland for being the best versions of you and I am very excited for all of our potential journeys together. Thank you to those of you who subscribed this week 
and thank you to those of you who continue to support and encourage my journey thus far. I sincerely appreciate it. Our minds may be different, our bodies may be different, but it is through our hearts that we know our spirits are one. Aloha!